Hey, welcome back to the ministry. I got a quick word for you. This is off of an episode of Equalizer that the Lord showed me the other night. He put this episode in front of me and it just further confirmed some things that the Lord was giving me revelation on. And I'm just like, shakes my head. This is a very particular and acute attack that the enemy is playing right now. Ruth 3 and 12. The closer redeemer. There is a, a redeemer that is closer than your spouse. Remember, Boaz was not the initial redeemer for Ruth. It actually was someone that was closer to her that had the opportunity to say yay or nay for her to be married. In this case, Boaz is your kingdom spouse. Boaz always was your kingdom spouse. But because there is a closer redeemer this individual may try to slip and slide their way up in there. I remember Stephanie P doing a word a long time ago, which pretty much says your spouse is observing you from a distance, but they're too afraid to approach you, don't know what to say to you, so on and so forth. But there is another individual that is also watching to wait until they attempt to approach. And this person is going to try to sweep in at the last minute and try to approach you first, okay? Now, in this episode, the main character's ex-husband showed up. Now, what the Lord showed me, now, I'm going to read this scripture and explain it after I do so. When a man hath taken a wife and married her, and it come to pass that she find no favor in his eyes because he hath found some uncleanliness in her letting him write her a bill of divorcement giving it to her hands and sending her out of his house and when she is departed out of his house she may go be another man's wife and if a latter husband hateth her and written her a bill of divorcement and giveth it to her in her hands and sendeth her out of his house, or if the latter husband die, which took her to be his wife, her former husband, which sent her away, may not taketh her again be to be his wife. After that, she is defiled, for that is an abomination before the Lord, and thou shalt not cause the land to sin which the Lord hath God given thee for an inheritance. So in some cases, if a woman is separated from her spouse, it can be considered that she is defiled and she can't be with nobody else. But if that man is not her ordained husband, she got to go to the ordained husband. So, I did a review on the Golden Chat. I don't know. There's some stuff going on in the background that y'all can't see right now. Bless Jesus, the manifestation of God's miracles is coming because it. <laughs> All I got to say is, <laughs> I did a review for Golden Child. Wasn't able to put it up. Stuff was going on. I hope you're reading the community post. Because if you're reading the community post, go back and look at what I was talking about in, in Golden Child. And it's another one in relation to the transfer. Okay? So, if that video review is not up, I will have it out as soon. If you see this one, that mean that one should be out. Okay? Because when I upload this one, hopefully I'm going to be able to upload them both. So, 
what am I saying? More than likely, the reason I can't upload it is because it's not time for these these things to be released just yet. And God does that to me. He did the same thing for the word of the Lord for the year. I was trying to figure out why he wouldn't let me. I couldn't find the word. It was on the computer. I couldn't find it. Finally managed to find it. Was able to locate it and was able to upload it. I wasn't able to upload until after I did another word, which had to be released before I released that word. So there's certain words that need to be released ahead of time. And if I don't understand that, then he's not going to let me release it. So he'll block me from being able to release certain things. And I may be like, well, why can't I put my... Because it's not the right time for that thing. And you're going to upload it too fast. And I know because my intent was to upload it first. And God was like, nah, you can't upload it yet. You got to get more wisdom and certain things going to come, come to pass. That's going to make sense why that word had to go later. Huh? All right. So with that being said, I posted Cinderella 3 review. The destiny transfer failed. God brought up a post from Stephanie P. from six months prior. Six months. And in that, he said uh, the same thing. The Destiny Transfer failed. I hadn't seen that word in a while. I forgot she did it. God brought it right back up in front of my face. And it confirmed some things for me, which I'm bringing to you because I, I actually linked that word in the bio post or the community post. That in this Equalizer episode, the ex-husband shows up. She's about to have a day off. This woman don't ever get no day off. She always out here fighting crime being queen save everybody <laughs> so uh when she get a day off for a block party she ain't working she invited everybody everybody's coming to coming to the block party we gonna chill today's chill day so reminiscing about old times this husband shows up he starts doing old dances he start acting and they sitting up there her and daughter laughing and everybody having fun and her friends is there and they having a good time why distraction i'm gonna tell you why it's a distraction in the meantime why is this a distraction good thing that you ask here we go there's a guy that is the other person that would be our considered our Boaz figure, okay? This man, her and him been going back and forth for the past four years. It's like, would you please just get together, okay? <laughs> this guy, just like y'all kingdom spouse, wander around, like hanging around, but don't want to make a move forward. And it's like, dude, they had he ended up having to get drugged to tell her best friend that he was in love with her. And I think she actually heard it over the phone. <laughs> but she afraid. Meanwhile, he's on a journey with his dad. Catch that. I need you to go back. If you've never seen the word, I, I say Father, Son, Holy Ghost. That was about the MacGyver episode where something similar to this happened. They ended up on a road trip. He didn't want to sit there and talk with his daddy. But his his daddy was actually sick and dying. Go check that episode out. You'll know because it's a picture of Jesus, a dove, and a, a representation of God. Okay? So, with that being said, your spouse is on a journey with God. And I'm going to mention this. Heart of Ruth did a video not too long ago. Where she talked about the fact that God has put your spouse on a mission. Catch 22 to this mission is what God is showing me. And it's not, it may not be for everybody. You can go listen to her word about the mission that your spouse is on. But what the Lord gave me recognition, he's got to go through a journey. When God puts your spouse on a journey, it looks like it's a it's a form of a wilderness. Anybody ever seen me do a word on the valley? If you go to Steam to Live the Dream podcast, I did a 
was it it was a one or two part word I might have done the whole thing where I talk about the dark season of driving through the valley or walking through the valley real good real good but oh well you gotta go through that valley though mm, mm, mm. your spouse gotta go through another wilderness journey some of your spouses if you recall me doing the golden child work this is the reason why i brought the golden child film up your spouse has been avoiding taking out that demon in the golden child eddie murphy when he had the opportunity to kill he called him brother noomsy when he had the opportunity to kill brother noomsy brother noomsy turned into satan with wings <laughs> and he was like oh i'm out he turned around ran off he said no I'm, i got the kid i'm gonna leave some of your spouses been trying to avoid dealing with if i can just even get where i'm trying to go maybe i can get away from that thing god's had them this is other this has been the delay your spouses won't kill relationships situations circumstances things that keep popping up god keep trying to show them this is something you need to deal with this is something you need to deal with and this is what's been delaying because he keeps seeing it it's like i see it's over there but i don't want to deal with it. i uh the lord will bring the song from the weekend up to me every i don't want to know my spouse has been pulling a, i don't want to know i want to i want to pay attention to that i want to i want to if they don't deal with these things, and this is another thing that your spouse is dealing with right now. If you don't deal with this stuff this time, God ain't going to let them near you. It's like, you want to get over there? Oh, I'm going to take you on a journey. You can get there. But guess what? This warfare is me, sir. <laughs> this warfare is me, sir. Catch this. So what ends up happening is Dante... Her dude is, he's on a on a road trip with his father. Don't really want to be there. He's bitter, root, deep root bitterness, a whole bunch of this stuff. He giving his father all kinds of words. I'm going to let you be around like he is. And, this, and, da, 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 da. and he give him all this, all this foolery. And his father's like, what I do? I didn't do anything. What I mean? Why are you off here? It's like, because I don't want you to, I don't want you to, to, to mess them up like you messed me up. Root bitterness. Root bitterness. With that being said, Ain't nothing like the wounds of family members and friends. Why? Because blood, they say blood is thicker than water, but ain't nothing cut you deeper than family members and friends. This is why some of your heaviest attacks always come from who? Family members and friends. <laughs> because those are those types of attacks that is like you really got to stand in <laughs> to not go off because you recognize the demonic attack in the midst of it. And you want to cut that demon's head off. But you realize that you can't say to their face. Because they don't understand they're dealing with a demon. This is why you got to go into your prayer closet and start tearing and ripping off demon's heads. And I tell you, if you do it correctly, you're going to walk back out. The same person that attacked you is going to be the same person that's going to sit there and say nothing to you. <laughs> and you'll be like, that worked uh-huh because you went in the, you went in the prayer closet and you took care of that sucker yes. and nothing like the wounds of a father mother sister brother and it's funny because the lord brought before me a, a skit with about cain and abel the other day am i my brother's keeper yeah wounds of the family and remember what Cain did to Abel hello so they end up in a shootout in a car with a car chase where Dante is driving and he and his father have to get out and he ends up with a wound on his leg and it's a deep wound and his father ends up needing to cauterize that thing I need you to catch it in the spirit, okay? First, the shots. There is much tension going on in the spirit. The enemy is in a shootout. You remember that dream I told y'all about? I talked about it when I did the review for the song Believer, I think it was. 
that there's warfare over y'all's heads. That I saw me in a cargo shipment container area and I was ducking bullets. Your spouse has been spiritually ducking bullets. And right now, because he's close, close. Oh, the bullets he's ducking right now. So, there's also darts being shot right up and upward towards the heart in relation to him. He's in the midst of a Job situation where everything's going wrong all at once, all at the same time. For some of your spouses, there are things that he was supposed to let go. People, associations, business associations, friendships, alignments, friends that was... And they keep trying to rotate back because he's still over there. He should have been left. But because he's still over there, they keep rotating around him. Because if they stay around long enough, they'd be like, let me rotate back around. Let me see if I can. Yeah, God's like, "Uh uh-uh. Your spouse is being tested. Right now, your spouse is being tested. Every time you go into a season where, where you're sitting over there praying in relation to the Lord, about the fact that why am I supposed to say why you keep talking about my spouse is coming and this is gonna happen and this is gonna happen and this is gonna happen and he ain't here. Guess what? Every time you did that, God went over to your spouse and said, Okay, bro, you ready? You ready? Okay, I'm gonna put you in a test. I'm gonna put you in that test this season. Are you ready to roll? And he was like, uh-uh. And he's like, Okay, I'm gonna send him back over there. And let him do what he wanna do. And I gotta come back to you and say, wait. Cause God know he's going to do it. It's just so he had to be tested so we already talked about the fact that at oh at the same time I'm sitting there trying to figure out now me personally same the day I got this word I went through my own I did. I don't understand why we be sitting up there thinking that we can pray stuff over our spouses and God not going to hit us first. That's the dumbest thing in the world. And then you you always act shocked when God does this. I don't know why. I don't know why. And if you pray some deep stuff, guess what? God going to hit you with that deep stuff. And you're going to be like, oh my God. Why did you hit me? I didn't mean for you to hit me. Get ready, cause if he if if he doing it to you now, guess what? You gonna get. Ooh, you better not be one to fight and argue with your spouse. Mm. Cause he gonna get you. God gonna get you real good. <laughs> that is his son. He gonna get you. He gonna get you. And some of y'all counterfeits out here thinking that you. You think that's why you get slapped upside the head? <laughs> cause it's like heck no, I ain't giving him to you. He's hanging around you too long, but I mean, I, you can't have him. <laughs> and if you don't move. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so he out here being tested. And it's funny, prophetic diary turned around. Literally, the word popped up on my telephone screen. The test. I was like, oh my God. It's a test. It's a test. God will tell you when you're in a test. If you're paying attention, you'll see it. You'll be sitting up there wondering why all hell done broke loose. And then you'll see somewhere the test. You'll be like, mm, why am I tested? So, with that being said, I call myself, oh, I see that word. I'm not going to look at it. I get it. I recognize. Thank you for letting me know. I understand. I'm in the test. <laughs> Guess what? This is how I know God was trying to get to me. My father was sitting right next to me and I used to use his phone and look up the same videos I'd be looking up on my own phone during a season. All of a sudden, here I hear prophetic diary coming out of his phone and he, this is how I knew it was God because my dad put his phone down. He just had it laying on his lap and he was listening to it for a minute and I'm like, what? And I got to hear what she was saying in that minute. And what she was talking about is some of your spouses are going through certain elements and God is dealing with them because he's got to make sure that they understand certain things. You can go look at the test word. Anyway, I don't want to go all deep into that because I'm going to be honest with you. I was, 
I was halfway not paying attention to it because I was listening to something else. <laughs> but yeah, they being tested. Mm hmm. So with that being said, she was talking about certain ways that your spouse has been being being insubordinate, ignoring, operating in substitutions, all kind of foolery. But he gonna turn around and fool around, find out he gotta come back to you anyway. That was what she was saying. I forgot I wrote it in a note. So everything that is happening is only happening to help them deal with the deepness of that wound. His father dragged him into a, a bunker and then he had already tied the wound off and he said, it's not healing like I wanted to do it's not doing what I needed to do so what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to take this he went and got one of the bullets from his gun and he said I'm gonna have to cauterize that some of your spouses right now because this stuff that your spouse is dealing with right now can't come into the season that he he's about to come into with you God's gotta burn that sucker he gotta burn it you know what a cauterized wound looks like it's a burnt wound. He poured bullet powder into that wound. And he said, I'm going to have to burn this. And he said, and he, he said, I better try for that. He's like, I'm going to give you my belt. You can bite on it. He was like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Some of your spouses, they try to be real macho. <laughs> you know, they be out there. Woo. <laughs> he took that gunshot residue and he took a lighter to it and when he hit that thing with that uh light when I tell you that man screamed God is pinning your spouse down Jacob when the angel fought him that night he's putting that man down and he holding him down he's like oh I'm gonna get this this time <laughs> Your spouse has to go through it. He's going to have to go through it. He ain't going to be able to avoid it this time. If he's going to get to you, oh, he going to have to go. He's going to deal with it this time. Because God's going to cut it off. 